as we've been doing of late. Uh, they say pictures is worth a thousand words. And uh, I, I want to show you this clip that uh, introduces the scripture that will hopefully give you a better understanding of, of what the scripture entails. Uh, but while they're getting that ready, it should be ready. Go with me to the book of Luke chapter 6. Just get, get Luke chapter 6 for right now. Luke chapter 6, verse 17 through 19. Don't have to put the scripture up yet. And then we're going to go to Luke chapter 7, verse 11 through 17. All right? Getting that. And while you're getting that, we want to welcome Brother Wayne Kelly with us this morning, who is on the organ this morning. Come back to the home. Amen. He came a long way from Snellville. Amen. To be with us on this morning. So we certainly thank God for him being here uh, this morning. And he, listen, he did he did something. See, I wasn't going to say something. He did something that I had to learn. And all of us have to learn about how to follow instructions mm -hmm. and follow directions. Brother Wayne has said the GPS told him mm -hmm. which way to go. Amen. He decided to go another route. Oh. It took him how many minutes? How many? How, 18, minutes 18 minutes out of the way. See, y'all got to listen to the spiritual GPS. When he tells you which direction to go, don't try to go another way. Amen. Just follow. The, I know it seems like, well, nah, that's a better way. got to be a better way. Nah, that ain't no better way. When God tells you to go one way, just follow that. I'm, hey, I'm a witness. I'm a witness. He's trying to. And the thing keep telling you. Uh, what, what, what is it? What is it? Reroute. 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 If you just stayed on a plane, first route it told you to go on, you'd have been okay. Reroute. And it takes you right back to where you were supposed to have been in the first place. Okay, that's just, that, that ain't even part of the sermon. That was for free. Amen. Come on, George. Luke chapter 6, and 
beginning at verse 17. The word of God reads, And he came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, who came, listen, to hear him and be healed of their diseases, as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him, for power went out from him and heal them all. Now let's look at chapter 7 and beginning at verse 11. Now it had it happened the day after that he went into a city called Nan and many of his disciples went with him in a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd followed from the city with her. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came and touched her the open coffin, and those who carried him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. So he who was dead sat up and began to speak. And he presented him to his mother. Then fear came upon all, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen up among us, and God has visited his people. And this report about him went throughout all Judea and all the surrounding region. I want y'all to help me this morning. This is something I don't normally do. But I need y'all to help me minister this morning. I need you to turn to your neighbor. I know I don't do this. I don't do this. this but somebody needs to be encouraged this morning. So turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor this neighbor. Say, neighbor, neighbor it's, never too late it's never too late for Jesus. For Jesus. Come on, tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. Tell him again. Tell, you, tell him again like you mean to tell him. Neighbor, neighbor it's, never it's never too late for Jesus. For Jesus. Come on and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's never too late. Mm. It's never too late for Jesus. Somebody, somebody knows that this morning. Somebody, I just, I just feel that, neighbors, I feel that in my spirit. Somebody needs to know. If you don't know, now you know. It's never too late. <sighs> Marcel, it's never too late. <laughs> I'm trying to get to my notes here, but, 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 but Wayne, it's never too late. Yes, sir. Never too late, Pastor. Ah, okay. All of us, all of us, beloved, have come across situations either in our lives or in the lives of someone else that those situations seem hopeless. They appear to be hopeless. Yeah, yeah. And Deacon Sam, too often uh, we shake our heads and we, add, we react uh, with pity. When we encounter someone else that has found themselves in a terrible situation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, beloved, when the shoe is on the other foot, talk to me this morning. When it's, when it's us that's going through those things, uh, we, we often find ourselves in a spirit of despair. Amen. We often find ourselves, you know, when... Look at somebody here, we can say, oh, this, I'm so sorry that he going through that. Oh, it's a shame that they, 
deal with that. But can I just tell you something? You just keep on living. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Because sooner or later, situations are going to come down your street and end up under your neighborhood. Amen. That's right, Pastor. Amen. But despair, despair. And when you look at that, that definition of despair, despair means the, the complete loss or absence of hope. So sometimes you and I may have found ourselves in situations where it seems like there is no hope, that, 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 that there's no hope to be found. This is, this is, and listen, I'm not talking about just one day. I'm talking about this is going on, neighbors, every day. It appears to be the same. Each and have you ever gone through that? That it seemed like the sun is never going to shine. That there's always a cloudy day or cloud yeah. hanging over your horizon. It seems like everything, nothing changes. That life appears to be hopeless. Yeah. But one thing, one thing, watch this. One thing that we've come to discover as we have been studying about spiritual warfare on Wednesday night, and you got to make it to Wednesday night uh, services on Wednesday night. But one of the things that we discovered and we've learned about the trick of the enemy is about the wiles of the devil. Yeah. And that word wiles, we come to know it in the Greek, it means to be tri to have tricks, mm -hmm. trickery, or, or, or an illusion of, of, of something, to deception. And you got to understand something, beloved, that the enemy just seems like He's winning. Your situation uh -huh. seems like mm -hmm. it's hopeless. Yo, whatever it is that you're going through, you got to understand something that whatever it is, it's just an illusion. Mm -hmm. See, the enemy wants you to think that everything is going to, everything is, is no, there's no repairing this situation. There's no repairing the relationship. There's no, you not, you, listen, you ain't got no job. Ain't no more jobs out there for you. There's, there's millions of people that's looking for jobs and everyone got the same qualifications or better than yours and you just might as well stay at home. The devil is a lie. It's just an illusion. Things are certainly going to get better because you got to understand that it's never too late for Jesus. Yeah, it appears, it appears as though all hope is lost. It appears, it appears that it's too late, but it's never too late. Deacon Rich, it's never too late for Jesus. And that's one of the things you got to understand. The devil, when he comes, when he comes, Isaiah, he, it, things, he makes things look like. Uh, he may think, and that's what an illusion is. That's what an illusion is, Jordana. It looks like it's the real thing, but it's not the real thing. It's just smoke and mirrors. And you got to understand in your spirit, man, that if God says it's for you, then guess what? It's for you. Take your devil to hell. Keep that what God has intended for your life. It's just, it don't sound right in the heaven right now, but I believe in God. Oh my God, I'm going to preach this morning. I really do. You, you, you got to understand, you got to understand that the devil, he's, he's, a, he's a sneaky rascal. But here it is, he's not that sneaky because, listen, we, we already know that he is a, he lost, he's lost the battle. Can, can I help you, can I help you because, because watch this, he thought, he thought he had Jesus. Uh -huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he thought he, he, us for right. he thought he had him. He thought he had him when he when he got when he whipped him and had him whipped and he had him buried. Uh -huh. He thought he had him. Yeah, he but the Bible lets me know that Jesus conquered hell, death, and the grave. Yeah, yeah. And on the third day, he died with all power. Yeah. 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 So he he's 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 lost. He's lost. Have you guys? Can I talk to the softball team for a minute? Have you ever went out on the field? And you just looked at a team and you just knew there ain't no way in the world these girls gonna beat us. Yeah. And y'all talk to you, you see look at them shaking up their head, yeah? And y'all y'all had that confidence in you. Say, like, really? You huh? Nah, ain't no way. And, and you'll say to your you'll say to one of your teammates, if you let her get on base, it's gonna be on between y'all talk to me this morning. <laughs> you and I gotta have that same look, that the same determination in our spirit, man. Say, listen, devil, I see you and you ain't First, you're not getting no second, and you sure ain't sliding in on home. <laughs> okay, all right. When we look at Luke, and I started, I started in Luke for a reason because when I, in, in chapter six, I started there for a reason because I want you to see something from the Amplified version. Amen. If y'all can put that up for me, the word says, Jesus, that there are those that came to listen. Get this, to listen to him and to be cured of their diseases. I, I need to stop right there. I need to stop right there because the Bible, listen, you got to understand there were all kinds of synagogues all over the town. Uh -huh. 
uh, but there was something about the preaching that was going on in the synagogues that wasn't, people weren't being drawn to where the, 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 the Jewish leaders were. They were being drawn to where Jesus was. It was yes. something about, about what he said to them yes. that set him apart from every other religious leader. And that's why, that's why men and women of God that are, are called to this assignment of, are preaching the gospel. Listen, we can't sound like it want to sound like somebody else. Oh, yeah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Rogers can't sound like Spanish. Yeah. Spanish sure enough can't sound like Rogers. Yeah. There's a gift that's in her. There's a gift in me. There's a uniqueness about each and every one of us. And they just want to hear Jesus. Yeah. They don't want to hear that you sound like somebody else. They want to know the word of God. Amen. So the people surrounded them. Why? Because they were listening to him. Amen. Something about listening to Jesus yeah. and the power of his words that saturates a man's and a woman's heart and soul. Too many people are running around in different places looking for things that will appease their, 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 their emotions. But beloved, when we get finished with trying to get our emotions satisfied, and we get down to the real nitty gritty of the thing which our spirit man needs. Yeah, yeah. That's what people are looking for. The yeah. word of God. Amen. Yes. The Bible says, it says they, were, they were listening to him and they were cured of their diseases. Look at this. In verse 18 it said, even those who were disturbed and troubled with unclean spirits. Yeah, yeah. And they were being healed also. Yeah. But listen, can I stop there for a minute? Then that because we talked about this also on, on Wednesday night, how it is that some people want attention right. where other people want deliverance. All right. All right. See, you got to listen. See, there gonna be some people, there gonna be some people that are gonna come and they, they they want help, but they don't really want help. They just want the attention that they're gonna get from you. But but baby, when somebody wants to be delivered of the mess that's going on in their lives, when somebody wants to be delivered of the demonic spirit that has taken control of their lives, listen, they will seek out Jesus for themselves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. It says it said. They were disturbed and troubled with unclean spirits, but they, 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 they had to know that, listen, I can live a whole better life if this demonic spirit wasn't controlling me. Amen. And you got to understand something. You got to understand something. Demonic spirits come in all shapes and forms. Yeah. All shapes yeah. and forms. Spirit of manipulation, that oh, is a spirit. Yeah, Jesus, Amen. Spirit, fear, that is a spirit. Yeah. Talk to me, somebody. Those are all spirits. Amen. Jealousy. Woo! Yes. That's a spirit. Amen. I pray on y'all team, ain't no spirit. I pray that y'all are like a oneness. Amen. Because if one don't like one for another reason, y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all, you, yeah, yeah, thank you for shaking your head. Amen. <laughs> jealous of what? Why are you jealous? Listen, you got a gift, I got a gift. Put our gifts together, we're more powerful than anything. Yes. Amen. Amen. But that is a spirit of jealousy. So guess what? Next time y'all see somebody and they hating on y'all, say, Satan, you ain't got nothing on me. Mm. Spirit of jealousy be gone. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Amen. Amen. But they said, they said, listen, the trouble in their spirit, there's unclean spirits, and they were also here. And all the watches and all the multitudes were seeking to touch him. Huh? For healing power was all the while going forth from him and curing them of all, saving them from severe illness or calamity. They were seeking to touch him because of the power yes. of the Holy Spirit yes. that was working through him. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I just want to reach out and touch him. Yes. Just reach out, because I, listen, I, I, I look like I'm all together, but I'm not all together. Amen. But I'm just, I'm just seeking him. I'm reaching out for him. Somebody needs to reach out for him. I need you, God. I need you in my life. I need healing in my body. Amen. I need healing in my spirit. I need healing in my mouth. So I'm just reaching because I can feel your power moving. Yes, yes, God. Yes, Lord. So they were looking. They were looking and they were receiving exactly what they needed. But when we get to this text, when we get to this text, this story is a, an especially touching story because it concerns, watch this, an only son and a widowed woman. You, you got to understand, you got to understand, beloved, the culture of that time, the culture of that time, a woman without a husband or a woman, listen, she had no husband or she had no son. 
in that situation, she was very likely not to be able to be supplied any kind of financial need at all. Because that culture, listen, if she had a husband, the husband worked and took care of the family. All right? Amen. But she had no husband that says she was a widow. She had a son, so she was pretty good. Because if the husband wasn't around, then the son could take over the responsibility and make sure the mom is taken care of. But now, the son is gone. The son is gone. And by right, probably she would end up in poverty. Because she had no means of support. And the Bible doesn't say how long she was a widow. But her son had died. Her only means of support had died. And the difficult thing that she had to go through, because you got to understand, there was no social programs back then in those days. Like we have today. If you need assistance, you can go to whoever. And, and you get food stamps and you can get all kind of, you can get all kind of uh, uh, child care assistance if you, you know, by yourself. And, but there was none of that. There was none of that for her. Matter of fact, matter of fact, listen. This problem of taking care of the widows had been going on for a while. So much so that God had even gave instructions on how to take care of the widows and the orphans. If you look at Old Testament scripture in Deuteronomy, he told the people of Israel, the children of Israel, that, listen, when you're in your fields, and I'm going to paraphrase it for you, when you're in your fields and you're gleaning or you're, 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 you're getting up your crop together, and if you, if you leave some on the ground, don't pick it up. Leave a little something for the widows to come by and get it for themselves. Talk to me, somebody. So much so, watch this. It even got to the, to the, to the uh, first century church, all right, in, in the book of Acts, in the book of Acts in chapter 6. Uh, in the book of Acts chapter 3, verse 1, watch this. In those days, when the number of disciples was increasing, yes. the Hellenistic Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. Yes. So here it is, in the first century church, they were dealing with the same issues about dealing with the widow. The widows weren't being taken care of. They had nothing to eat. So guess what? The same thing that was going on back then in the first century church and the 21st century church is still going on. They're not being taken care of like they should be. All right? So now here it is. Here it is. Here it is. This woman, this mother, she's being de she's devastated. She has no husband. She has no son. All right? And the death of her child, I, I can only imagine, I can only imagine how this mother felt. She lost her husband, she, she might be able to get over that, maybe, you know, but a child, some of you mothers, y'all know and understand, the loss of a child, that's a hard thing to deal with, hey amen, that's a loss, the love. And, and can I just say this, watch this, not just so much did that end the physical sense, ah, but, but to not have a camaraderie, if you will, with your child that's still here on earth. Because there are many relationships where mothers and daughters don't get along and they're living in the same city. Amen. Some of them living in the same house Amen. and don't speak to one another. They're lost. They're gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, and, and, and can, I, can I just talk to the men for a minute? Because we act like we all macho, George. <laughs> they don't want them do what they're going to do. <laughs> but you know, with the, when the real gets real, mm -hmm. we feel some kind of way too. Amen. Because why? It's your child. It's something that God has given you, and you you were able to nurture it and bring it, bring you know, sow into that child. But then when they're gone, phew, imagine, imagine how this mother might have felt. The pain that she was going through. Mm, the confusion that she must have been feeling. She has no one. She has. No one. So let's look at, look, I'm going to be finishing in a minute, but the, the condition that she was in, the condition that she was in, it, was seem, it seemed hopeless. It seemed hopeless. But just remember, it's never too late for Jesus. It's never too late for Jesus. The Bible says in verse 11, now it happened the day after. Jesus had been performing miracles and healing. He just left. A centurion's house. 
where the centurion's servant had been healed. Amen? He just, he just left that house. and So now here it is. He's going and they're coming into the city. Now, all of the healing that had been taking place, people have been rejoicing. I mean, rightfully so. They've been healed. They've been delivered up, up from demonic spirits. Man, there's a party going on. Woo, hallelujah, I'm free. Yes. And they're still following you. This is one thing I like about this, though, Deacon Pharrell. Now, after they got their healing, they didn't leave the healer. Right. Y'all not seeing this. Amen. Because the Bible said a great multitude followed after him. Amen. Too often times when we get our deliverance, Danette, we, don't, we forget about the deliverer. That's right. That's right. But they kept on following Jesus. Amen. Because God blesses. Not only, not only, this, I thank you for my healing, but guess what? Somebody else needs to know how I've been healed. That's right. So that's why I'm following that new man. That's why I'm going to keep on going with it. Because I want you to see. I was once lost, but now I am found. All right, all right. What's up? So they follow, they follow, they follow, they follow. They follow. And the Bible says, watch this. And the Bible says, when he came into the city called Nain, and many of his disciples went with him, and, get this, a large crowd. And when he came near the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was being carried out. The only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and, hear this, a large crowd from the city was with her. Jesus got a large crowd with him. The woman got a large crowd with her. Right. <sighs> this large crowd was happy. The other large crowd was sad. Y'all seeing this this morning? This large crowd had possession of life. This large crowd had possession of death. Ah, but when it's never too late for Jesus, amen, amen. when life, y'all don't want to talk to me this morning, meets death, and when they come together, ah, y'all don't want to say that to me this morning. Ah, so you got to understand, you got to understand, it was customary, it was customary, beloved, that when uh, a, a funeral procession came along, uh, how it was that most of the folk joined in with the funeral procession. Okay. They joined in. Y'all know how it is here in, in the state of Georgia. And this is the only state that is done. I, I want to let y'all know that, that I've come aware of. That, that um, and it, it's not law, but it's out of respect. Amen. Yeah. That, that when a funeral procession comes down yeah. the street and you see them, yeah. and all the cars, if you're driving, yeah. all the cars will pull to the side. Yes. And let that funeral procession go by. Why? Out of respect. Because guess what? Sooner or later, you're going to be in one of those lines as well. Well, amen. 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 If you ever see somebody, if you, if you ever see somebody walking, I've noticed, I've noticed, and I've been in plenty of funeral processions here in Georgia. If you see, see, see somebody walking, a brother that's walking, and he walks by the funeral amen. procession, come out, and he got a hat on his head. I've seen them take their hats off, yes. wait, and amen. stand yes. still yes. until the entire funeral procession goes by. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the respect. Amen. Yes. Now, where we come from, my God, you, you, better, you better make sure that you bump it a bumper when you ride down the street because people are going to cut in front of you. They don't care nothing about it until their time comes. Mm -hmm. But here it was. It was customary that people would join in when the procession came by, all right? They would join in. They would join in out of respect for the bereaved. So here you got to understand. So as Jesus and his followers met, this procession of death and despair. He and his followers joined the funeral procession. Uh -huh. Now this one thing I need you to understand, beloved, that whatever Jesus joins in with, he can turn things around. Mm -hmm. Whatever Jesus joins in with, he can turn things around. That's why you and I, we can't leave Jesus out of anything That's that we right. do in our lives. Right. If you want your situation to turn around, I... I how the young folks used to say back in the day, I D double D to invite Jesus into your situation and watch him turn things around. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. It's never too late. It's never too late. Never too late for Jesus. Jesus, his presence changed this lady's situation. His presence. Has anybody ever had Jesus come in and change your situation? His presence just alone just come in and change things around for you. Don't fool me this morning. I, 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 I know I can tell my story, but some of you got some stories that when you allow Jesus to come into your life, I, I'm looking at some witnesses up in here this morning that you know what I'm talking about. When he came in, yes. just his presence. Yes. My God, my God. Huh? Can, I, can I talk to my kid? Huh? 
see, 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 my, my, my softball team, they're here today, but they, they're here because God ordained for you to be here. And I guarantee you, I guarantee you, watch this, can I talk to y'all for a minute, ladies? Because I guarantee you, if you allow Jesus, y'all, what's y'all record right now? I just want to talk to y'all, what's y'all record right now? Six and four. Six and four. Six. That's, that means you're just a little over 500. Just a little. You would rather be 10 and zero. Huh? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, that's a no-brainer right there. Can I, can, I, can I challenge you this morning? Can I challenge you? Since you're here, I might as well challenge you. If you, and I don't know what your spiritual walk is, but I guarantee you, beloved, Listen, if y'all would just take Jesus on the softball field with you. All right. That's all. That's I guarantee you, I'm standing here to tell you, your season, how many more games y'all got? A lot. A lot. <laughs> y'all want to make it to the playoffs, don't y'all? Yeah, yeah y'all want to make it to the championship. I, I, I dare to say y'all want to make the, you know, win a championship. Yeah, yeah, all of y'all are, are, are upperclassmen, right? Except for who, who, who's, who's the, and the seniors, any seniors? All of y'all were great. Only juniors, sophomores, sophomores and juniors. Huh. Listen to me. Listen to me. Mm. If you would just commit not only your talents but your life to Christ, amazing things are going to happen. All because of him. Now, can I can I just be honest? That don't mean bad things aren't going to happen either. Because they gotta come. But when you girls come together, I, I deep double dare y'all to get together and just start praying one for another. If you ain't doing it already, just I, I dare you. And watch, because how many more, y'all missing some players, right? How many players on the team? You said 11? So it's only, you man, you, you fooling me. So there's, there's seven more of y'all that ain't here. You know the girl that said that I was going to the fight that I was talking to? Yeah, I know who that is. Yeah, I know who that is. I don't know who it was. Yeah. And see, oh man, I'm Keep, keep can rolling. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's never too late for Jesus. That's right. That's right. Never too late. Man. The reason why God was able to speak to you at the time that He needed to speak to you. It was to set you up for a blessing. To set you up for something greater than watch it. You don't even, you can't even imagine it right now. Amen. But he did it so his glory can be revealed in your life. Amen. Young woman, young black woman. Yes. So much potential in all of you. But if y'all just, and y'all know, y'all say, man, that cat old, his face is all gray. <laughs> I ain't always been gray. I've been young just like you. That's right, and had some, thank God I had people to deposit into me words of wisdom. Right, did I always right. follow those words of wisdom? No, I did not. Many of these younger, somewhat younger people in here, they didn't follow those words of wisdom either. That's right. But we're here because of the grace of God. And I just want, listen, this, the Lord is just saying, you guys, if just you right now, is here right now, surround one another with love and with prayer. That's right. I'm declaring that not only will your lives change, but your season will change. Yes. Amen. If you just do what the man of God is telling you right Amen. now. That's right. It's not all about softball, but it's about what God can do through you, yeah. through softball. Amen. Lives need, to, lives need to be changed. Can you imagine, could you imagine, watch this, after you've calmed down, Musa. <laughs> <laughs> if you had been able to go to that young lady and say, you know what, Jesus loves you and so do I. It's all good, girl. I wanted to bust you upside your head. <laughs> huh? Why can't we be real? That's right, man. But I thank God. You tell me, I thank God that I did. You have a good game, have a good season. We'll see you again. Playoff time gonna come, Brian. Amen. Amen. Amen.
You played them already? Play them again this Friday? See, but see, now you have a different mindset. And you don't have to, you know what? That's between you and God. If he tells you to go and approach her, hey, you know what? I, just, I do remember what you did. Amen. But I forgive you. Yes. God bless you. Amen. I might need to come to that game. <laughs> I, I'm lost. I'm lost. That's all right. That's all right. It's never too late. Never too late. It's never too late for Jesus. Let me let me try to finish this up. Let me try to finish this up. Jesus sees this woman. He sees this woman. And the despair that is on her face. Remind you, she just lost her son. She just lost her only source of income. They're carrying her son out to be buried. That's it. I'm done. She's through. But Jesus meets her right at the time that she needs to meet him. Actually, the Bible doesn't say anything about if she knew anything about Jesus. It doesn't say anything about her faith. She, she, she did not call out to him. Because watch this. When you are in despair and when your situation has you in such a disarray in your life, can we be truthful this morning? Sometimes we don't even think about calling on Jesus. That's right. That's right. Pal. Because we're just so downtrodden with That's what's right. going on in our situation. It's just so terrible. That's right. You, you just, you just, ah. Uh -huh. But Jesus saw her. Jesus sees each and every one of us right where you are and knows exactly what you need. That's right. That's right. He knew that this woman needed her son to be restored. Uh -huh. The Bible said when he saw her, he went to her and says, don't, don't cry. It's going to be okay. Mm. And that's the kind of God we serve. He's Amen. compassionate. Amen. Amen. Went to her. Went to her. Don't cry. Then he went to the boy. Went to the boy. This, this is this is this is this is it because huh, the source that needed to be sustained, that seemed to be dead, Jesus resurrected. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 Yeah, man. Your source that you need that seems to have been dead and dried up. And is about to be buried. Mm -hmm. Jesus is now resurrecting it and bringing it back to life yes. to give it right back to you. Don't you dare count Jesus out. Don't you count him out. That's right. Amen. That's right. Thank, Thank you. Man. Thank you. Yes, God. Thank you. Somebody said he's an on-time God. He's yes, he is. He yes, may not come at you when you want it. <laughs> ah, but he is certainly right on time. Son, <clears throat> get up. And the Bible says he woke up and he began to speak. Huh? I, I, I just imagine, I can only imagine what this boy must have said. But he woke up and I, I can imagine if he's anything like you and me, Deacon Pharrell, he's, Mom! What's he looking around? people around me. Mom, what's up? Yeah. The Bible said he gave her, gave him to his mother. The thing that was now dead, her, her source, her supply, her financial income gives it back to her. Y'all listen to this. And the word of God says, watch this, and it was noise abroad. See, your deliverance comes, beloved, not just for you, but for you to be able to share it with somebody else about what God has done for you. I'm in a room, I'm in a room full of people that can testify to the fact about what God has done in their lives. I'm looking at miracles. I'm looking at miracles. I'm looking at miracles. I'm looking at 
Man, but I, y'all don't understand. Miracles. When you get to TSU, just, just, just pick up some dirt for me and just toss it in the wind. That's, that's, so that's for Pastor Spain. Amen. When you get there, amen. Amen. Love it, understand it's never too late. It's never too late for it's never too late for Jesus. Somebody needs to hear this today. Mm. Somebody needs to hear this today because your situation seems real bad. Mm. But it's never too late for yes. Jesus. I, I I look at Marcel and I marvel. Mm. Marcel can stand up and testify that it's never too late Amen. for Jesus. Amen. Amen. It's never too late for Jesus. When the enemy tries to count you out, mm -hmm. it's never too late for Jesus. Mm. I'm looking at a man right here that had issues, didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. Doctors didn't know what was going on. But when the saints of God began to pray, Hallelujah. it's never too late. A woman with cancer, Hallelujah. breast cancer, Hallelujah. Thank you. or went into the operating room, mm. believing and trusting in God. Yes. Now she here still worshiping and praising yes. God. It's yes. never. Yes. Thank you. Neck surgery, back surgery. Look at her, but then she just, y'all should see her sometimes in praise and worship. She doing more dancing than God will allow. Never too late. Car wreck. Got all jacked up, but look at God. Never too late. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Don't you dare count him out. For those of you that are listening, don't count him out. He's always on time. He sees right where you are. He sees your situation. Well, why, you know, why do you have to wait so late? I'm, just know that he's there. Yeah. I'm trying to finish because, listen, can I help you? Y'all know the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, don't you? Let me help you this morning. The Bible says they were put into the fiery furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar set the furnace seven times hotter than it should be. He wanted them to burn up real good. So much so that the people that put them in the fire, they got burned. Isn't that amazing? How you would figure if you're putting somebody in fire that they would get burned first. But the Bible doesn't say that. It says the people that was behind them, I won't get, if you're going in the fire, I'm not going to stand and so I'm gone. <laughs> But the Bible said that they got burned and put them in. Yeah. Uh -huh. But watch this. Show you how he's never too late. When you trust God yes. and you believe him, while they were in the fire, yes. Yes. the Bible says that he came in there with them. Y'all yes. Mm -hmm. yes, not hearing me this morning. Yes, see, see, don't believe what people tell you that he will take the heat out of the flame. Ah, That's not true. No, no, no. Mm -mm. Because the that's part of the element of the fire. You got to have heat to have fire. But he will come in the fire with you and comfort you and allow you to have a testimony because the Bible said when the king came down and looked inside, he said, did not we put three in there? But now I see a fourth one and a fourth one looks like the son of God. He will come in there in the midst of the flame and the fire and the turbulence that you're going through and be right there with you and comfort you. Never too late for Jesus. Thank you for sharing with us this morning. I pray that this message has blessed you. I thank God for the move of his spirit. And for those of you that are watching, I pray that the same spirit that is moving in here is moving right where you are while you're watching this recording. Be blessed and highly favored of the Lord this day. Whatever you're dealing with, understand that it's never too late for Jesus. Trust him by faith. And watch what he does on behalf of you and your family, wherever you are today, that he's going to be glorified in your life. Thank you again for sharing with us. We invite you to come.
if you're ever in the great Atlanta area, to join us, 1445 Municipal Parkway, where the Spirit of the Lord is going on in this house. Come on by and let us show you some, some really agape love in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So until the next time, have a prosperous, productive, and powerful day. And always remember to fully rely 